seeking. So I know oh, sure. in, I think it's in uh, either your book or on one of your training downloads on uh, the PCMA website, uh, you go into kind of a unique view on confrontation seeking. And I wanted to kind of learn more about the function or what you perceive the sure. function is, whether it's, sure. you know, more than just tension and then kind of. Oh, it's part. absolutely more than it's not. Yeah, absolutely. First this of all, is presenting, by the way, in April. Yeah. So yeah. This is just to be clear. <laughs> confrontation seeking is simply a label. I gave it. This is something people do. This is nothing that I need to prove in research or anything like that. It is a social phenomena. Humans do it. And the only humans that do it are socialized ones who know the rules. Everybody else just walks up and beats the shit out of you, okay? Um, uh, little kids with autism, okay, or nonverbal, right? One of the downsides of working with them, they can be hugging you, and in the middle of hugging you, they're biting you. There's no warning. There's no argument. There's no concerns. They're not pissy about anything first, okay? The high-functioning kiddo that curses you out and threatens to have you sued, right? Um, I love working with them. Why? They understand the rules, right? Only the ones who are floridly psychotic would just hit you in the middle of a conversation when they're calm. And I've worked with people like that. The other ones pick fights, okay? And that's what it's, the reason they pick fights is they understand what is right and fair and concepts like he started it, right? If you understand the concept of he started it, this is what fits into confrontation seeking because then you understand in your own mind, I am justified. This is why in the Star Wars cantina, as I say in my presentation, the guy at the end of the bar didn't just kill Luke Skywalker. He picked a fight with Luke Skywalker. I don't like your looks. My friend doesn't like you either, okay? I'm wanted in seven star systems. All right, the reason he did on that is that even in that shit-ass cantina in Mos Eisley, there's still rules of engagement. You can't just walk up to people and shoot them. You have to say, you're ugly, I don't like you, your star system is full of scumbags. You have to start out somehow. So anyway, this is what confrontation seeking is. And everybody does this, like every high functioning person does this. It's like, I didn't invent it. So anyway, um, that, that's what it is. Now the reinforcer is, is usually something that has to do with, um, I want to fight, I, I want, and usually if you wanna get specific, what about the engagement do you want? That's probably slightly different for different people. Some people may want to hear you cry. Some people uh, may want to see other signs of damage like blood, torn clothing. One guy we worked with, he would not stop his crisis until he had torn the shirt off of every male staff member it, within a 50 mile radius, you know? So like, and, and these dudes were not in good shape. So every time there was a crisis, they all looked like Chris Farley trying out for the Chippendale dancers. So it was, except they were like hot and sweaty and had scratches on them because, you know, this dude did not stop until he tore the last shirt. It was like almost an OCD like thing at this point. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, it, it, it was that it was that kind of a, uh, a thing. So um, a anyway, that um, the specific reinforcer may be different for different individuals. But the, the thing they all have in common is um, they seem to understand I need to be justified. I, I, I need to be justified. I need to egg someone on. I, I need to get um, it's the phrase. Give me a reason give me a reason, give me one, just give me, a re just give me a reason that that reflects um, this society, societal influence, right? I, I need to be on the side of right, right? Um, which actually speaks a lot to the individual because it all the thing I love about confrontation seeking, um, and individuals who show it, they also by definition, show self control, confrontation seekers have self control. That's what it is. I, I, I'm seeking it because I need an opportunity. Therefore, I'm holding it in. I'm waiting until I'm justified. That's, that's the great part about it. They already have demonstrated to us through their confrontation seeking. I know how to wait until the proper time to punch, which is, which is good because it says, hey, 
you know, if you can wait that long, you can wait even longer, maybe until you're 27. So, you know, until you're old enough to sue the teacher that pissed you off. So, you know, and, and claim that she traumatized you. Can't you do that? Let's talk about how you'll sue her later, okay? Uh, you know, revenge is best when you plot it out thoroughly. So, you know, you can do that with your higher functioning kiddos, right? Uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's signs of damage. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's the thing. And that usually happens in the, by the way, that is usually confused for typical attention seeking. And the other problem, Monica, with attention is attention, although it's used by behavior analysts, is not a scientific term. Not like the way reinforcement is. It's defined. It's debated. It's in textbooks. Attention is not. Attention is not. This is attention and this is not. And these seven research articles illustrate through data why. Does that? No. No. And that's why I like to say human-produced stimuli. My good friend Enya Sapani likes to say um, socially mediated versus non-socially mediated reinforcement. Why? He doesn't like getting caught up in attention either. It's a bunch of bullshit, all right? It's something that somebody else used. We borrowed it from the common language. It was an error. We never should have done it. Um, that's why I like human-produced stimuli, because it's clean. I, I've maintained somebody's um, attention, maintained face slapping by actually turning away from them when they slapped. So you would colloquially say, oh, well, Merrill removed his attention. Well, if that's if you define attention by eye gaze, yes. But if you define attention by anything I do as a direct result instantly when you do something, tit for tat, right, controlling me in some way, he was still doing it. So how useful is attention after that? So it was, it was a human produced stimuli. I turned around and and it increased, right? But was it attention? And then I started to ask myself, is that even a useful question, right? The real question is, what stimuli in the environment produced it, maintained it? And the answer would be rotating my rotating body. Now, do you need to call the rotating body attention? And why do you need to? Th this is kind of the point. And so um, would I call it attention for them? Uh-uh. These kids are already getting attention. The, it, the typical attention we're talking about, hey, Joey, you're doing real good work. As, do you need any help with your assignment? Okay, that's what we typically talk about by attention. D is that what they want? Uh, no, 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 no. They want this. Stop. No. Help. Okay, they want signs of damage. They want commotion. They want very specific stimuli. And I've seen um, the reason the confrontations talk uh, started, Monica, was because of behavior plan written by a well-meaning behavior analyst who I think mostly worked with nonverbal children with autism who was now working with a high-functioning 10-year-old. And she said that his behavior was maintained by escape. And they were going to teach him how to ask the teacher for a break from his task. And I said, I don't know this kid well, but I watched him in class and I know he talks really well. And I will give everyone in this room a thousand dollars if he does not know how to say, I don't want to do this. Okay. And they all just kind of looked at me like, <laughs> and uh, because they all knew it was true, they all knew it was true, right? This is not an issue. This is not an acquisition issue. This is, this is a young man with a full vocabulary and correct grammar, okay? So, that, that it, no, it, it, he knows how to not do work. He wanted to engage the teacher, so he'd start with, I'm not doing this. And she'd go, that's okay. And then he'd escalate because that did not produce the engagement. It didn't produce the confrontation. She said, that's okay. I'm going to go out of area. I'm out of area. Oh, well, that's okay. You shouldn't be that, but that's okay no confrontation. So he's going to keep upping it until there's a con Okay, now you're not allowed to stand on your desk. We have a winner. And then, then he goes into his crisis, right? So it's, he would, um, the characteristics for him was he would, he would ramp up just a perfect little staircase, right? To until I got what I needed, which like Hanley would say that not in all instances, but in many instances, when the reinforcer is delivered, it shuts off the behavior. Right. But that's only true when it has a high satiety value. If you've ever worked with a little kid that you make, if um, if they make a farting noise and you go, that's naughty and they immediately fart again. Right. And you go, I said, that's naughty. They don't stop farting. They increase their rate of, far of farting noises. Why? 
because you didn't deliver the end reinforcer. You delivered a tiny one, which was also a motivating operation, which made them make fart noises even more because unbeknownst to you, they need you to make faces for like another five minutes, right? And that is the reinforcer. So, you know, in cases like that, I'm just saying, because I remember Hanley said that about something, and he's correct in most instances when you deliver the reinforcer, the behavior stops, but not if it doesn't produce instant satiation. That's like people say like, oh, I loved getting married. It was a big reinforcer for me. It was, it was a reinforcer for you. Why didn't you go out and get married again immediately after, right? Well, it's not that kind of reinforcer. It's the kind of, if it is a reinforcer, it immediately produces satiation. You don't wake up on the second morning of your honeymoon and go, that was really fun, sweetie. Let's do it again. Like the five-year-old that you just gave an airplane spin again, all right, is not what you say right after saying I do, okay? Because it has very high satiety value. So, you know, there's limits on these. There's limits on these things. I mean, except for Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, who got married seven times, absolutely a regular reinforcer for her. Like she loved it. She divorced the guy, got went right out, got married again, like like seven times. So for her, it was different. But so, yeah, <laughs> everybody else. Did that answer your question, Monica? <laughs> yeah, if it didn't, and I know it answered 14 others. <laughs> it did, and especially if the topic of your talk at QCABA is going to be around confrontation seeking. I had a couple other questions, but I don't need to ask them because I'll just wait for your talk. <laughs>